All right, it's uh, early summer 2015. We continue our excavations into this cellar uh, from a building that dates to 1608. We know that because this building is tied into the corner of James Fort's 1608 edition where the fort went from a three-sided triangular fort to a five-sided fort. Since our last update, we decided to do a small test excavation that I'm standing in that's about eight feet long by two feet wide in hopes of locating the subsoil or the bottom to the cellar. We located the subsoil so in, in some places, so we know the cellar is, uh, at least in this location, six feet deep from the surrounding grade. Uh, we're missing about a foot of soil from the 17th century, so we can assume that the cellar again, at least in this location, was seven feet deep in the, when it was constructed. So a pretty deep cellar. Now, all along we've been speculating that there could be a well within the cellar. Lo and behold, right where I'm standing, not only did we find subsoil in some places, but we also found a subterranean pit, or pit within the pit, if you will, that it's probably going to be a well. Because when you are six feet down or actually uh, seven feet below the uh, modern grade around us, you're only a couple feet from the water table. So why else would there be a pit just starting at this level? And it's a pretty good sized pit. We only see a fragment of it, but you can tell it's going to be a good sized pit, maybe square in shape. Uh, why else would you have a pit within the pit if you weren't going for water? Because again, it's just a few more feet until you hit the water table. So what's really exciting about the possibility of there being a well in this cellar is that we have seen that before. James Ford's first well was inside a large cellar towards the center of the triangular portion of James Fort. So also the shape of this sub pit below me uh, appears to be a possible square shape and we have seen a square shaped well in James Fort's second well that was near the northern corner of the fort. It was about a five foot by five foot square well framed of oak timbers. What's going on behind me is Don Warmke is continuing to excavate another quadrant. So we divided this uh, cellar up into four quadrants. We, where I'm standing is the southeast quadrant. We've already excavated that, at least in places down to subsoil, like I mentioned. But we are now moving into the southwest quadrant. And after we remove the fill there, what we'll have is a profile of all the trash layers or all the rubbish layers that the colonists deposited here to my left, which is an east-west profile, and then all that will be left to excavate is the, no the fill in the northern half of the cellar, and then ultimately the fill in this, this sub-pit within the cellar that could be the well. So as per usual, uh, we have had some, uh, some interesting finds in the last month, some interesting artifacts. We had a small sliver, about maybe a third or closer to half, of a silver English sixpence. We also had several bone dice, uh, beautiful little objects. Colonists were gaming and gambling here in 1607. In addition to that, we continue to find uh, animal remains from their diet, and we had a few days ago uh, an interesting little tooth to a skate or a ray. We had a copper alloy uh, buckle maybe from a, a strap, uh, possibly for holding a sword or something like that. And uh, un unusual to find the, uh, the tongue still attached to the buckle, so that was, that was pretty exciting. We found the top uh, third to a Bartman or Bellarmine jug, one of these uh, salt glazed stoneware jugs made in the Rhine River Valley. Uh, these are the ones with the bearded man, hence Bartman, which is G German for bearded man. These are a pretty common find, but you don't usually find such a large fragment. Most colonists would have probably had access to a Bartman jug. A few days ago we found another large fragment of the same Bartman jug that mended to that piece. So the artifacts that we are now seeing are from the James Fort period, so that's 1607 to the mid-1620s when James Fort stands on the landscape. So stay tuned, I'm sure there are more discoveries that lie ahead.